Hey guys, Woods Farm here, Project Kubel Wagon. It's been a long time since I made a video, but uh, I'm out in the shop working on the car and I th thought I'd show you what I'm working on. Um, I finally got an opportunity to rent out the Kubel Wagon to a movie production, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, that's happening next week. So before that happens, I want to go ahead and work on some little projects, uh, particularly the exterior door handles and also some electrical stuff to uh, hopefully deal with some uh, starting and reliability issues. Okay, first things first, um, I'm going to work on these door handles. Um, I'll show you what I've got on the go. Okay, so I started working on this project yesterday, and then I realized I should be making a video. So I'm a little bit ahead, but I'll show you where we're at. So for the last two years, um, I've been just driving the car around without exterior door handles. Now, you can see on the inside, it's got the slam latch and with the handle and essentially I almost always operate the car with the roof down. Um, it's just real easy just to reach in and open it up. However, um, it does have door handles on the exterior. So I'm gonna work on that today. So here's what the handle is supposed to look like. Um, now, originally I had a different idea and then I checked the reference material and I decided, well, I'm going to try to make something more like this so it looks more correct. A little more work than I had planned on, but I think the end result will be a little bit better. Okay, so you can see the slam latch has a keyed hole and uh, I think that's 5 16 I've got some key stock. So the idea is to bend a handle, uh, form a handle for the outside, weld that piece of key stock to the, uh, the handle and then thread it. And that way you'll be able to uh, feed it through and then bolt it secure from the inside. So the basic plan of attack is to cut, this is one inch, three sixteenths flat bar. I think I'm gonna cut this into approximately five and a half, six inch lengths. And then I've got to drill a hole in it and then make a series of 90 degree bends and then a curving bend just to get that handle shape. And then we've got the um, 5 16 uh, key stock. Basically that will get um, sized and one end of it will be threaded and it will get attached to the handle. <laughs> Okay, that's the basic shape of the handles. Um, ran out of acetylene, unfortunately, um, and just had to kind of beat on them with the hammer to get them shaped right. I think I like the bottom one better, but uh, good enough for now.
So that's it assembled. I just got to tack it um, just so it is at the right angle and kind of lines up flush with the door. So I'm just going to put a tack in there and then I'll take it over to the bench and weld it, uh, weld it down and grind it clean. Unfortunately, the paint's not right. That's all I can get locally. Got to make another order for some paint for the scale car project, and I'm going to get some extra uh, spray cans for touch-up work. Um, but until then, that's as close as I can match it. I think some sort of spring washer behind it would work well. It, it's a little loose. If I tighten it up anymore, it affects the ability for the latch to spring back up. But for now, it functions. Okay, so originally I had one wire coming right up from the starter button uh, through the fuse panel at the front and right back to the starter solenoid. It was only an 18 gauge wire and uh, yeah, that may have been a mistake. I probably should have ran a heavier gauge, but uh, I don't know if the, the solenoid is getting tired is this is just a cheap, uh, cheap starter, um, or maybe it has something to do with the ignition circuit. I'm not sure if the uh, I'd have to look at my old wiring diagrams, but I'm not sure if I have the ignition power and the starter uh, button power coming off the same circuit, maybe on the same fuse. I'm not sure, but it seems like ever since I installed the electronic ignition the flamethrower, it was doing this thing where it, it occasionally you'd hit the starter button and it would do nothing. Like it wouldn't click, it, the starter wouldn't roll over, nothing would happen. And if you push the button for a few seconds, then sometimes it would just, it would kick on. And then other times it would work. It was kind of intermittent, happened on and off. So I'm not sure I read about hard start uh, relays and I looked at some wiring I didn't buy a kit I just got a relay and wired it myself I've got uh, 12 volts directly off of the battery coming off the starter itself going through the relay um, back onto the solenoid and then I used that wire that I had coming back originally that's onto the other part of the uh, relay and then I had to make a ground, just a, I, don't, I can't see it in there, there's a ground off the body. Um, this is just a temporary fix. I don't like where this is positioned. Um, I think it's kind of a little too exposed to the elements and that ground um, off the body back in there somewhere, it's bound to fail. It's bound to get rusty and corroded and fail. But for now, I think this is gonna work. Here's the other part of the project, brand new battery. Um, this has got a two year warranty. I've got the paperwork. So if anything happens on the road, um, I'm covered. I was just using scrapyard batteries up until now. And I went ahead and I cleaned up the ground and put some uh, dielectric grease on there. 
and I've got a new terminal on this side so everything is clean in here, cleaned up. Um, should be giving me a lot more power. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to work on is this new oil filter. I've got it on there, but uh, I think I'm going to reposition it. It's offset, and I'm going to flip it around. So I had a, just a little crappy air filter stuck on the top of the carb, and uh, last time I had this the vehicle out at an event, it rattled off, got caught in the down here, and I uh, got all messed up. So I went ahead and bought one of these filters uh, from CIP1. Uh, I called to make sure it would fit my carb. The guy uh, over the phone was really helpful and he mentioned uh, treating this with an oil spray and uh, that way it, you can actually clean it and reuse it. So I think that's probably what we're going to do here. And then like I said, I'm going to try to, there's a vent here and I assume this is for to put some uh, vacuum on the uh, the crankcase vent. So we're gonna try to hook up a tube and make that work as well. Okay, this is all I could find locally. Uh, CNN, recharger, cotton air filter cleaner system. This comes with an oil and a cleaner. Um, it talks about cleaning the filter and then applying the oil, but this, considering this filter's brand new, I think at this point we just need to apply the oil step one apply cleaner rinse filter dry filter step four oil filter spray K&N air filter oil evenly along the crown of each Filter pleat holding nozzle about three inches away. Allow oil to wick for approximately 20 minutes. Touch up any light areas on either side of the filter until there is uniform red color on all areas. Red color. Okay, we'll give that 20 minutes. Got a nice red color to it, so you know that you've got an even uh, coverage. Actually, I think at the back might be a better spot for it. And then it's kind of ghetto, but I got a little brass I tried a couple different things I had around to try to get 
to get this hose to fit over that. And I think we're gonna go with this. not bad it's kind of a press fit right there uh, it's pretty tight not quite kinked right there but and it's just snug up on that just press fit I think that's good Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Um, got a lot of work done today. Just waiting for the paint to dry on those last two door handles and then I'll install them. Um, I've got that cold start relay put in and uh, when I tested it out, it seemed like the starter was a lot more responsive. So hopefully that solved my problem, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. I also got that new uh, air cleaner on there. Um, hopefully that air filter oil does its job and I'm able to service the oil filter down the road. So I'll come back and report on how well that stuff actually works. I'm not sure when the next Kubel Wagon video is going to come out. It looks like very soon I'm going to be working um, back on the Scout car. So if you're familiar with that project, um, the SD KFZ 222 Armored Scout car, we are going to have videos coming out on that project in the next couple of weeks when we get to uh, back to work on it. So definitely go over and check that out. If you have any questions about the Kubel Wagon, um, Definitely leave them below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.